I wonder if you could tell me how you've become known in some spaces as the father of Viagra. <laughs> well, it's true. I, I have become known in some spaces, mainly the scientific spaces, but the news media, at least here in the U.S., has spread the word. So now I'm surprised when some of the lay people in the public uh, have heard that phrase. Often when I'm traveling for years now, when I'm traveling to give a lecture, I'm introduced surprisingly as the father of Viagra. And you know, it's funny because my mom was alive at the time Viagra was marketed and she lived for another eight or nine years. And she used to always hear that. And you remember, my, my mom is an Italian immigrant, and she would always say, Lou, why do they keep saying that? Why don't you tell them to stop saying that already? <laughs> she didn't want to hear that. <clears throat> so let me explain why I was known as the father, why I, I acquired the acronym, the father of Viagra. <laughs> you know, back, let's pick a year, uh, back in 1990, I was talking to one of my urologist friends at UCLA, and he told me that the neurotransmitter released from the nerves that attached to the erectile tissue, okay, was unknown. And he asked me if I knew, if I knew what it might be. I said, his name was Jake. I said, Jake, I'm a pharmacologist. I'm not a urologist or a neuroscientist. What do I know what the neurotransmitter is? So we were talking and he planted a seed in my head and I went to the library. And that's when I read that John Garthwaite discovered that certain nerves with certain characteristics in the brain release nitric oxide. And then I started reading about the erectile tissue and the nerves that attach to the erectile tissue. And in my reading, I came across a group of uh, investigators in Spain who characterized those nerves as being very similar to nerves in the brain. But he did not know what the neurotransmitter was. And then I said, oh my goodness, if these nerves in the brain release nitric oxide, could it be that the same kind of nerves in the periphery leading to the penis, leading to the erectile tissue release nitric oxide? I, I thought it's possible. So I worked with my urologist in the laboratory, my people, his people. We set up various experiments, first using rabbits and then using human tissue. And to make a long story short, we, we published in 1992 in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is like your Lancet, you know, really good journal. We published that the neurotransmitter is nitric oxide. And we showed how nitric oxide can cause relaxation of the erectile tissue. And we showed in, in dogs that administration of nitric oxide produces an erection. And we published that. Okay, fine. I'm not a drug company. <clears throat> I don't have hundreds of millions of dollars to test drugs in the clinic to see it could, if it could produce an erection. I wouldn't even know how to, how to do that. Neither did the urologist. But the key is that a, a pharmaceutical company close to where you're broadcasting in the UK, in Sandwich, uh, England, they had discovered a drug back in the 80s that worked through a nitric oxide mechanism to lower the blood pressure. Okay, they were, they were, that, they were working at, on cardiovascular drugs. And they found that in order to lower the blood pressure in human volunteers, you had to give a lot, you had to give like 200 milligrams. And then it would lower the blood pressure, but it would produce this incredible side effect. <laughs> and the side effect <laughs> was penile erection. <laughs> and so the nurses noted that, noticed that among all the male volunteers. So when Pfizer Pharmaceuticals got word of that, they stopped developing the drug. They didn't wanna mess around with that kind of side effect. And they stopped developing the drug and put it back on the shelf. That was a mistake they made. <clears throat> However, they were redeemed later. When the people at Pfizer read about my work, that nitric oxide in the penis causes an erection, 
They took the drug back off the shelf. They did research. They filed a new drug application, an NDA, and in record time, the FDA approved it in, in, in this country. And in 1998, it was marketed as Viagra. And so the, the Pfizer people invited me to celebrate. They, they, you know, they, they told me that they would not have been able to develop that drug had I not published our work on nitric oxide. So that's why they started calling me the father of Viagra and that spread out. So now you know the story. <laughs>